Hello and welcome to another edition of Dropping Bombs with me, your host, Corey Ballmeister. As always with the lovely folks over at StarCityGames.com, bringing you the best in tournament needs, articles, just really they do it all. Check, check everything out about them if you haven't uh, been over to the SCG page in a while. Get premium. It's worth it. My brother's a featured article or a featured writer over there. He makes some great works along with everybody else over there. So check that out. So what we're playing this week is Glogak. You're like, oh yeah, Hogak. I've seen this before. Well, the 51 cards in Hogak are all set in stone. All the great cards. It's all about what you do with those nine other slots. And like I've said before, I think I could play nine ham sandwiches and still be completely fine with where Hogak's at. The nine ham sandwiches I chose this time around re revolve around Glow Spear Shaman. It's basically just a fifth, six, and seventh Seder Wayfinder trying to Flip over your graveyard as fast, or flip over your library as fast as possible to try to uh, get Hogak into play on turn two as consistently as possible. I think that I think it's the best deck by a lot. Uh, moving forward to going to GP Vegas, just play Hogak. I mean, we're not going to have it for too much longer. Just play this ridiculously busted deck and thank me later. Okay, enjoy the games. All right, and welcome to round one here with Glogak, a Hogak version playing Glow Spore Shaman, just as basically a 5th, 6th, and 7th Seder Wayfinder, just trying to maximize on being able to fill my graveyard with uh, the 2 drops as well as the 1 drops. All right, so we'll see. We are on the draw here. This hand's okay. Um, it's not anything spectacular, but usually any Stitcher Supplier into Glow Spore Shaman or Seder Wayfinder or even another Stitcher Supplier usually is, is good enough to keep. Uh, and this hand is no exception. Now, this is going to kind of suck. They're going to take Stitcher Supplier. Um, so that's a little unfortunate here. But we have a lot of top decks we can get. If not, it'll just be a slower hand. We'll have to settle with turn three, Hogak. Oh, just kidding. Hogak's back. All right, so here's an important lesson. What to sack with Verdant Canacodons or any kind of black sack, sack line right away? I usually almost always get Faithless Looting just, or uh, get Blood Crypt just so I always have access to Faithless Looting. Um, and this hand is no exception. All right, so we'll start with Stitcher Supplier. We got a Vengevine, so not bad. No Hogak yet, but that's what we got. Uh, we got four more looks for with Glow Spore Shaman here. All right, what are we, Esper Controlling over there? Could be Esper Shadow as well. Yep, seems like an Esper Shadow list. Can be an interesting matchup for sure. Uh, this, yeah, yeah, that's Esper Shadow. Stubborn Denial kind of kind of gives it away. Ooh, there's Seder Wayfinder. So while Glow Spar Glow, Glow Gak is kind of the namesake of the deck, Seder Wayfinder is still the better option and that's why we have four of that. So we will be playing this. Now we're looking for Hogak. No such luck, but those are a, a lot of goodies. Um, so, you know, we don't have the mana to cast anything and get our Vengevines back quite yet. So we're really vulnerable this turn. Next turn, we can go Glow Spore Salmon plus Gravecrawler, get two Vengevines back, get a Blood Gas back, and we can put an absurd amount of power into play next turn. But we're really, really, really vulnerable to like a Nell Spellbomb. Um, so I am afraid of that. But like a Ranger Captain of EOs here or something, they're just in trouble. They would have to use it as a tutor and then sacrifice during our upkeep. Otherwise, we just get to go off. All right. Game one, usually pretty good. Uh, gets a little more shaky post-board, but that's with every matchup against Hogak. We're always fighting ley lines afterwards, which is fine. We have a lot of uh, answers for them, even some in the main deck, just in case people are still adapting that tech. All right, Ziller, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, just an angler. Don't care about that. Don't care about that at all. All right, so we're going to start with Glogak. We always start with playing the creature before you play the land, just in case we hit more blood gas. Shaman, do we want to land on top? No, you almost never do, to be honest. Um, okay, so now we're going to go like this. Get our blood gas back. Gravecrawler triggers the Vengees. Yes, yes. 
No Hogak still, which is pretty unfortunate being through uh, a third of our deck already, but what can you do? All right, so they take six. Venji hits the graveyard, but next turn we can go Glow Spore plus the Haste uh, Blood Gas to get that last one back. So now, you know, I mean, blood our, uh, Death Shadows are going to be large, but the real question is, do we care? No. <laughs> See, Ranger is okay because if they get a uh, four, oh, actually, that's pretty good. Because if they get a Death Shadow and Sack Ranger, nope, if they Sack Ranger, they're dead. Um, so I believe they're just dead here because if they Sack Ranger, they only have two blockers for our three power, four power, and then they take six. And if they don't Sack it, we just go nuts and we bring in two more hasty creatures. So they are dead. So I believe we will start with... The Glow Spore Shaman. We are glowing in this version of Hogak. And for GP Vegas this coming weekend, just play the best deck. Just play Hogak. Play Hogak or Urza. Urza is respectable as well, but just play these good decks. It's just too good not to do. Okay, so now we go like this. Boom. Get a Blood Gas back. Boom. We play a Blood Gas. Boom. Vangevine, trigger. And we're attacking for a lot. What do you do to that? What do you do against that? <laughs> All right, game one going to us. That is the easy game. Now we have to just sideboard um, for what we're going to expect. And what we're going to expect is graveyard hate. So it's, it's really now becomes a question of how much we can bring in. What I like to do first here is kind of cut the cards first to see how much room I have. Um, and usually I like to trim on Faithless Looting. I really like to just trim on a lot of things here. Crit Breaker is actually pretty good. This is one card I look to take out a lot of the times. Um, but we're going to keep that one. We're going to take out one of this, one of this. We're going to take out one Glow Spore Shaman and the Stinkweed Imp. And I think this is how much room I want for the deck. Um, everything else seems pretty important. I can take out one Grave Crawler as well. But we don't want to take out too many zombies if we're leaving in Crit Breaker. So I really like Fatal Push, um, and I like Nature's Claim as my first way to deal with uh, uh, Leyline. We're going to bring in one Force for sure. Engineers are bad. Thought Seasons are okay. I would rather just have my combo working effectively, which means I think we probably want to bring in, bring back in a zombie or two. Maybe we'll go with Glow Spar just in case we get Faithless Looting and one more Force. So this is a total of seven ways to deal with Leyline. I think that's good on the draw. I like less on the play, but I think we'll run with this for now. And as far as like sideboard guides with this kind of deck, you just can't have them, right? Like you're just, you're doing things so differently based on your specific decks and the specific cards you see that it's really hard to be like, this is how I side every single time. It, you just can't do that. So evaluating our hand here, we ha we don't have the nut draw or anything, but Karen Feeder into Seder Wayfind with a force disruption here, pretty much all you can hope for. So we're going to keep this. So if they have the ley line, um, that's okay. Let's Let's check to see how much they're mulliganing because people aggressively mulligan against Hogak as they should because it's that powerful. So there's that ley line. Um, looks like they are down to six. So now if they go Thoughtseize, we actually can still disrupt it. Now the question is, do we want to force right now? And I think the answer is we don't have to um, just because we're Karen feedering here. Okay, so there's an answer to it as well. But it's not a free answer, which is important. So we're going to go Karen Feeder. And now we can um, just discard this Assassin's Trophy if we would rather keep the Vengevine. But I honestly think the Trophy is probably more important. Especially if this Force gets countered. So now I think it's time. We're going to just get rid of Vengevine just in case this doesn't work. It did, luckily. Okay, now we're going to go Seder Wayfinder. And now if we hit... If we, ah, no, Hogak doesn't actually work right now because we would need a sixth card. If we had a Sack Land, it would be good. But, all right, so unfortunately that was all blanks. Now we're just kind of out of gas, so that's a little unfortunate. But we get to get, to get in there for one, do some tricks with Blood Gas. We still have a piece of Disruption, so it's not the worst, but we definitely did not hit uh, our best Seder Wayfinder there. All right, taking a big whop in one. They're probably... 
going to, I would think, pain there. Okay, they're playing a much more uh, subdued uh, Death Shadow strategy right now. They're not just taking damage and trying to kill themselves. They're letting us do that. Nice. Okay. That's a good card against us, I will say. But not the worst. Like, we get to do some tricks with Karen Feeder here. Another force. Now we just have too much hate, essentially. So now we're good if they play another Ley Line. Um, but otherwise, it's probably going to be a bit of a dead card. All right, now we're going to Sack Bloodgast. Put a counter on. We're going to play this Sack Line, return Bloodgast. And then we're going to get in there with this Karen Feeder. And they're just blocking with one. So no need to Sack. Then we'll ship it back. We'll play nice and slow here. If they're on that all chump blocker plan, you know, this is not uh, something we're definitely afraid of. Okay, so they took the two here. Lingering Soul is coming back with leaving two mana open and one of them being the silent clearing. So this just this just screams out um, that they are trying to just sacrifice this, this uh, silent clearing. So what we're going to do here, we are going to sacrifice Bloodgast. We are going to sacrifice Catacombs. Now we're leaving ourselves a little exposed to Surgical there, but we're okay with that. All right, we'll bring this back. Ooh, Crypt Breaker is an interesting one. Now we are going to get in there with our Feeder and Bloodgast this time. Okay, we're okay with this. Now we are going to go with a Crypt Breaker and play a land. Bring this back and pass the turn. Didn't even sacrifice it. Interesting. Very interesting. Teferi Time Raveler. And it's a cool promo one, that's, that's beautiful. Nothing we wanna actively destroy in response, so we'll just, uh, be open to the mercy of Teferi here. Okay. It's a little unfortunate. All that work we've done for our Karen feeder. Okay. So this is a, a good place to start, in my opinion, since we do have some dead cards in our hand. That was a great draw. Gives us a lot of gasoline. Definitely going to get rid of force. And the second Crypt Breaker is not that good. Now we're going to kind of try to go off again. Now that we got a little fuel in the tank. We're going to go with the Wayfinder, hopefully find some Gasseroos, and a Sacklon would be great. There's Hogak, there's Gravecrawler, oh yeah. Now just, what is the best way to approach this? And oh, I have a great play in mind. So first I want to attack and kill Teferi. Teferi, I'm going both there, it's just more important. They could path something here, but that's okay. Killing Bloodgast anyways, huh? That seems weird to me. So now I want to go Karen Feeder, trigger Bloodgast, sacrifice Bloodgast, trigger it again. We're gonna get the Blood Crypt in case they path us. We have another target. Trigger this again. Trigger Gravecrawler. Now this, keep in mind, this is the third zombie for Crypt Breaker. And now we're going to Hogak tapping the non-zombies um, so that we can still draw a card here. Hogak world. We already played a land so we can draw a card later. And we say, good luck. Now, what can we actually lose to? I think their head's about to explode if they were on Arena. Here they might just boringly uh, click the concede button. And I mean, let's look at this game. They had turn zero ley line and it just wasn't that close. We're just doing stuff. Okay, so just the Death Shadow. Now we are going to tap three zombies, draw a card. Okay, another Hogak. Now we're gonna stitch a supplier to start this party. Another Zombone. See what kind of action we can get. Absolutely nothing. Um, that was a brick sandwich. We can start, we can do a Faithless looting right now. I like that because we do have essentially a dead card in our hand in the form of Hogak. We just discard it. We can play it from our graveyard. Okay, this is kind of cute. We get to discard this, play a Stitcher Supplier here, do some stitching. Still didn't find anything of relevance. 
But now it's just time to uh, get on in there. So if they, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, we just attack with all, right? I mean, this deck is just glowing with power. Stay tuned for more Glogak action here. Round two coming at you. All right, and welcome to round two here with Glogak. Um, testing out this modern brew. I shouldn't say brew. Testing out these three cards that are a brew in the deck because let's get real, Hogak is not a brew. Hogak is the metagame. Um, okay, so we're on the draw here. It's just a little unfortunate. And this hand is a little awkward. Double Assassin's Trophy is not great, but these two cards are great. I love turn one Faithless Looting, Stitcher Supplier, uh, turn two Stitcher Supplier into something else. We see so many cards. We can discard one of these. We're going to keep. We're going to keep. It's definitely fine. All right. What you got? Tarmo Fire. What are we up against here for round two? Tron! Well, these Assassin's Trophies are going to be absolute gas. We're just going to strip lands left and right. So I think with that being the case, I want to just Faithless Loot and get rid of some of these lands. Wow, that was bad. Um, Now I'm going to get rid of Blood Crypt and just Delta, but that was quite terrible. So what we're going to end up doing is just Assassin's Trophy lands probably for the next two turns. Um, Okay, Relic. We'll get rid of one of these. So now we actually don't have to. They did not assemble the threat of Tron next turn. So now it's how much we want to play into this. And I kind of think I just don't. I kind of think I just want to go Assassin's Trophy. All right. Green for green. This looks like classic Tron. All right. So Sylvan Scrying for the mine. So that's what we'll be destroying. All right, so now we are going to Assassin's Trophy, Urza's Mine. And the more we strip the Tron lands from our uh, Tron opponent, the more they feel the need to just sack Relic to try to progress their board. So that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to choke our opponent out so that they feel the need to go through their deck to get rid of Relic. And then we're going to drop all our graveyard. That's my plan. We'll see if it works. I really don't know, but that's what has worked for me in the past. So basic forest, definitely not as scary as a Tron land. Now we might just untap and looting since we're not afraid of Tron. So our life total doesn't matter too much. So I'm also just going to get a overgrown tomb here. All right, we will looting, get that free value from the graveyard. Okay, now I think Bloodgast and Benjavine is enough hate in the yard where they may want to just pop it now, especially if they don't have Tron lands. And then we just refuel next turn. Yes, got him, got him. That's exactly what we wanted. Like our hand is stacked. We didn't care about those cards. We threw our worst cards away, in fact. Shh, crap. <laughs> crap. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, well now we have no choice but to at least do something, but that something might just be jammed with Vengevines. Maybe that's bad though. I think let's just actually start trying to do some Seder Wayfinder stuff. Okay, so there's a Grave Crawler and some Faithless Lootings. Now I think I am going to play and sacrifice this. Now we're going to put them to the test a little bit. We're going to go with a Stitcher Supplier. So now if we hit Hogak, it doesn't matter if Relic. If they don't pop Relic now, we get to Hogak. If we hit it. So they're they're pressured to do this right now, I think. Like they're giving us a chance to really do some stuff. Yeah, if they don't do this and we have Hogak in our hand. Yep, see? That's awesome. And we didn't have it right now, so this is great. But we would have hit it. They're smart. Great job by our opponent. You know, absolutely great play by our opponent. Um, but now we're set up pretty nicely. You can't fight the tide forever. All right, so there's Tron. Urza's mine has been searched up. Okay, that's good. We kind of needed that. All right, so now we're going to go Wayfinder. We did not hit, quote unquote. All right, but we're going to go Marsh Flats. Bring back. Now we're going to find how many forests they truly have in this deck. All right. So now we're going to Hogak. 
So we're cool getting rid of these three cards, but I would like to keep Stinkweed. So then we're gonna go like this, 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 and unfortunately we have to uh, not attack for one extra damage. Not that big of a deal, realistically. Now we could have sacked Marsh Flats to avoid an attack for one more, but it's just not a big deal. Okay, well, I think we still have to, during draw step, we're gonna hit this tower to avoid one more Tron turn. That might be all we need. Okay, so they got another forest, but now they do have Worm Coil, which is a T. Yep, that's pretty good. Pretty good magic card. All right, we're gonna dredge. Got a Grave Crawler, nothing else too exciting. Um, actually, Faithless Looting to discard two Vengevines is pretty strong here. I take that back. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was just the blade. That was just the 100% blade. Now we're going to sacrifice this because Karen Feeder does a lot of good work here. All right, let's bring them back. Let's get them all in there. Now remember, we can Karen Feeder to get around some of this. Now, do we want to just kill Hogak is the question or do we want Worm Coil to um, stick around? So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They're only taking 15 here or they gain four, but Worm Coil dies. That's probably more important realistically. So we're gonna let this happen. Now we haven't played a land yet, correct? Nope, okay, so we're gonna do some cool stuff. We're gonna sacrifice this. We're going to sacrifice this. We're going to play this. We're gonna get this back, get this back, and we're gonna play Hogak. We're not gonna do more sacking triggers yet. I wanna leave that Catacombs around for other stuff. All right, Hogak's back, back again. Hogak's back, tell your friends. Now we're afraid though. Like this could easily be Ugin, but we do have uh, the Karen Feeder, which is really important. That's an Ugin. That's a Coogan. I actually think they're just still dead. Exile for seven. Okay, well, sacrifice everything. We do, we'd rather have them in our graveyard, of course, than uh, exiled. This is one giant Karen feeder that's going down. All right, 12, 12 Karen feeder, and then getting rid of itself. So now we don't have a zombie, that's the problem. And we gotta make sure we still have another land. There's one blood crypt. Okay, phew, we got a blood crypt. Okay, we do have a way to bring back the Vengees here. Start, step one, bring back the blood gas. Step two, draw a card. Oh yeah, that was insane. That was insane. Okay, now we're gonna go Grave Crawler. Gonna go Grave Crawler, Vengees. Now we're gonna go Attack. Now another Ugin probably will get us, unfortunately. So that's 10 damage. Now the question is, do we want Hogak? Like if they have another Ugin, I think we're just in trouble. But if they have just like Ulamog, we can beat that. But we want another blocker, plain and simple. So I think we have to. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna, so now we'll have two blockers. We just have to risk it. There's a, there are draws that lose us this game now, even though we kind of started off insanely. Deal with it. Karn, that doesn't do it. That's cute and all, but that ain't enough. Draw card, Karen Feeder, pretty okay. Um, but we're just gonna right click attack all. Boom, Glogak. Strikes again. Yeah, because they're still, with lifelink, still taking enough. Okay, games two and three. So, Tron definitely has an, a lot of hate for us post-board. So how do we want to sideboard against Tron? Blood gas are pretty bad, so I like cutting like two of those. Crypt Breakers are too slow. Karen Feeders are like the most important card, so do not cut those. Assassin's Trophies are great. Um, Stinkweed, it's okay, we're gonna keep it. Um, so they usually do have ley lines for us, which is kind of a tilt. Thought seizes are pretty good. Um, nature's claims. That's only five ways to kill ley line. We want at least one more. So I think we'll go the stinkweed. Six ways to destroy it if they do have it, as well as our engine is still intact. We'll go with that. You really don't want to over sideboard against ley lines. Like you, you don't want to just cripple your deck. You know, crippling your deck well, having answers to Leyline, I mean, that's just that's just not a good plan. 
So here is an awkward hand. Like it's good. It's a good hand. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have turn two Hogak or a way to deal with ley line. But it is a decently aggressive hand with Gravecrawler into Glow Spore, so we're gonna keep it, but we could easily get rocked here. Okay, no ley line, step one. They probably just have a perfect Tron hand. Okay, so we'll start with the Stitcher Supplier, trying to find Hogak. We didn't find it, but we did find a Vengevine. So our play next turn could easily just be Gravecrawler Karen Feeder. Probably Karen Feeder first, stacked Sack Stitcher Supplier. Oh, wow, what did they keep? What kind of hand did they keep? That seems crazy to me. Okay, Karen Feeder. We're gonna go for the higher upside here since we're gonna be playing another creature and go for Hogak. No luck, but we did get a second Venji. Okay, so now we'll go like this. Um, I guess we have a grave crawler in our yard. So we'll go like this. <laughs> I don't know, Tron should not have kept that hand. Maybe they didn't have ley lines and it was just a really good hand. Like they had, um, you know, probably one Tron land, star, Sylvan scrying. They're like, I just need two draws. I still think it was wrong. I'm not defending uh, that play right there because Tron mulligans insanely well. So kids, kids at home playing some Tron, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, we're 2-0 with Glowgak. Stay tuned for our third and final round. All right, and welcome to round three here with Glowgak. Once again, we lost the die roll, so that's usually horrible in modern. But once again, we have a gasser of a hand, so that's good in modern. So we're definitely going to keep this. We have, basically, you can uh, determine the strength of your hand. Like, if you have two lands, Stitcher Supplier, Seder Wayfinder, snap that off. That's your best one, too, in my opinion. Faithless Looting into Double Stitcher Supplier is probably a little better, but that one's a little tougher to do, and uh, sometimes it's just not as good. And we don't have Hogak, so it's not the perfect, perfect draw, but this is a completely fine draw. So once again, like I said, we're on the draw. Ooh, Burn. Burn could be bad. Okay, so it definitely is. We're going to try to minimize the amount of damage we take from our lands. Okay, so at most, it looks like we'll take two here in total. So Stitcher Supplier, now we're really digging for the, the Hogak. Okay, Blood Gas, so it wasn't a complete whiff, but it wasn't great. But we are going to shock ourselves next turn, so we'll be, we'll be going down to probably 10. You know, that's how fast Burn is. So this could be over if you blink, so stay tuned, y'all. All right, ugliest basic mountain I've ever seen in my entire life enters the battlefield. <laughs> Okay, Skewer, Lightning Bolt to the face. Lightning Bolt to the face. Yep, we are well below 10 now. Holy. Okay, so now we have an option. We really don't, though. We just have to Seder Wayfinder here and just hope for the best. Um, we're going to get Blood Gas back. Now, that's all the damage we're going to willingly do to ourselves. But now we're in... I mean, they just could have le land, double Lightning Bolt, and top deck a Bolt, and we're just dead here. No such luck... Um, no such luck here. So this is going to be pretty bad for us, I think. I guess we'll take the land. Yeah, this is not good. We did not get anything that makes us fast enough to deal with them. I mean, we're attacking for one. Sometimes Hogag, you know, just looks very unimpressive and sometimes it's insane. All right, Boros Charm. Now, two cards in hand to deal five points. I'm scared. All right, well, we definitely need something like this. We're gonna discard Venji and Gravecrawler. Two is the same as one against this deck. So we're gonna go to one. We're gonna be able to attack and probably put Lethal in, in play for next turn. So that's, that's not bad, realistically, but uh, I, I, it won't be enough. I'm, I'm almost positive. So this is the best we can do. Um, and it's, it, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near enough. They just have to have a land on hand and then brick again. So if we attack with all, we leave ourselves dead to goblin guide. So I don't want to do that. So we're going to leave one back. So this is seven, putting them to nine. Then we still have lethal next turn. Um, at least we're not losing to goblin guide. We can do this to not lose to double one drop. And then six, put them to 10, six again, seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, this still presents lethal. So we're playing around double creature um, in case they have that because it would feel real bad to lose to double Swift Spear when we uh, could win the game otherwise. Now we pray. 
Now we shuffle for game two. All right, we got crushed. On the draw against Burn, it's pretty tough, realistically. Um, okay, so let's see what we can do. I really don't like Assassin's Trophy against, I mean, it's okay. So we're gonna be on the play. I do not like Crit Breaker. Um, I like Fatal Push to deal with uh, like LD Eldeon of the Great Rebels. I'm not even sure if that's the card, what it's called. Nature's Claim just to destroy um, Rest in Peace is good. Some of these burn decks even play Ley Lines. So it's, it's kind of rough. So we'll do a couple of these. We don't want to change our deck too much because most of the time it's just a race. Now, I think we will get rid of... Blood Gas is pretty slow. Stinkweed's pretty bad. I can see one Assassin's Trophy coming out. Maybe Force of Vigor is just worse. I want to say something like this. We want to keep intact all our combo pieces, really, and just try to win the race. Overall, though, I think this is a bad matchup, so it's, it's, a, it's a little scary here. This hand is a mulligan. Um, we only have a Stitcher Supplier to discard. We have to get lucky in top deck of Sackland. It's just not good enough. Sand's also bad, but I think this one's better than going to five. Because we can actually get a turn two Hogak in play if it's in our top um, five or six cards. It's a lot of pain from our lands as well, which is unfortunate. But it does have an answer to their graveyard hate if they have it. I think we just have to keep. It's of course not great, but what can you do? All right, so we want to play a sack land first. Unfortunately, we got to take three. You hate to do it against these decks, but we need green for our next turn. Free lightning bolt for our opponent. They got to be ecstatic. Goblin guide. We unmulligan now. Force of Vigor is okay. Now, even if we hit Hogak in the yard, we still won't be able to cast it because it does need to be six cards. It needed to be from our hand, so we might as well not take damage. And now Rest in Peace kind of gets us good, but what can you do? We did get a Grave Crawler and a Seder Wayfinder. We do not, and a Bloodstained Mire. We do not want on top of our deck. We'll get in there. Not much, not, our deck is not performing well this time, I have to say. Glo or Hogak isn't always good. It's most of the time good, but okay, Vengevine on top. We gotta just block. Our next turn is quite bad. <laughs> Especially if they have uh, the rest in peace here. Wow. Okay. Not much we can do about that. We're just going to Assassin's Trophy that at their end step. Try to win with this Grave Crawler and attacking with Vengevine next turn will be okay. So now we're waiting because if they play another Rest in Peace to just say like, ha ha ha, you're never having a graveyard. We'll be like, ha ha ha, got ya. Wow, we might actually kill that. Depending on how much spells they cast. Even if it's one, I think I have to. Yeah. Trophy this. All right. So now we're at a decently healthy life total. I'm not super afraid to die next turn. But the thing is, we are still pretty far away from actually killing them. And our graveyard is basically useless. We have the force here to uh, to get it eventually. But I think I'm just going to go Vengevine and start pressuring. Three turn clock. We have to put ourselves down to seven. I'm just going to get that other basic swamp. We can't afford to go to six. We still lose to Boros Charm and... Uh, uh, lightning bolt. Go, go! Basic creatures! So now if we top back another Vengevine, we got lethal next turn. Uh oh. No! Oh, lightning bolt, Boros charm! No! All right, well, what can I say? Burn, I think, is an actual bad matchup. Like, I think the metagame is condensing in so much where you're either playing Hogak or you're playing decks that have a good Hogak matchup. We ran into one of those decks that has a good Hogak matchup. What can you do? All right, everybody, stay tuned. I'm gonna talk in the recap about our three matches um, and about the individual card choices in Glogak. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, welcome to the recap here. 
All right, so let's talk Glogak a little bit here. I'll explain some of my card choices and uh, the sideboard slots as we go through this. First, I wanna talk about the matches individually and kind of how we expected them to play out versus how they did play out. So Esper Shadow right away, uh, game one, it's very easy. They usually only have like one to two spell bombs. You just kind of run over those decks. Hogak, Glogak, whatever variation of Hogak you're playing has a great game one. Um, it's it's just well known, you know, the deck is just insane against them. They have to get pretty lucky. And without Teamer Battle Rage, I think it's uh, a lot easier for us because that card can just kill us out of nowhere. Uh, then game two, we also just kind of smashed them because they just didn't have Leyline. They didn't have Leyline. They had one spell bomb. We worked our way through that quite easily and uh, just kind of smashed round one. Pretty easy. Round two, we played against Mono Green Tron. This was a little bit more interesting. Game one, we actually just assassin trophy three Tron lands and just delayed them by three turns and then eventually just overwhelmed a worm call and overwhelmed an Ugin, which doesn't always happen, but Karen Feeder is an all-star against Tron to avoid that exile effect. And then uh, round three against Burn, we got it, we got annihilated, you know, plain and simple. They did their thing perfectly the first two games, just burned us out. We were on the draw where maybe we could have won if we were on the play. It's a bad matchup. Not too much to talk about there. They had rest in peace, um, which kind of closed the door on us as well as just a fast clock. So that was the matchups we played here. Let's go to the ind individual card choices. As far as the lands, everything's pretty standard. I love having two basic lands when you don't want to pain yourself. Um, I don't like the peat land that some people are playing. I like one cliffs and then the rest sack lands. Pretty standard stuff there. We'll go to, um, let's talk about the, the core 52 cards of the deck. Um, and I, it might not be exactly 52, but whatever. The main cards of Hogak that you just can't touch. Karen Feeder, Gravecrawler, Stitcher Supplier, Faithless Looting, Seder Wayfinder, Bloodgast, Vengevine, Hogak. That's the deck. Don't touch those cards. That is what it is all about. Let's see, we got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the 52 cards of the deck. There are nine slots to play with from there. And honestly, realistically, you can just put nine ham sandwiches in and I think the deck still performs insanely well. I chose for my ham sandwich to be Glow Spore Shaman, Assassin's Trophy, Stinkweed Imp, and uh, Crypt Breaker. We'll talk about all of these. Crypt Breaker I like in the fair games or the games where like both players have ley line. You can really gain enough card advantage to either A, find an answer to their ley line, or B, just rebuild your engine after you've kind of attritioned out yourselves, as well as you can just discard Vengevines and it still works with your Grave Guard. It's okay, so-so. Assassin's Trophy is in place of uh, Lava Axe or Lightning Axe, Lightning Axe. Just because we've been seeing some main deck uh, ley lines and I think just being able to Assassin's Trophy game one, as well as it kind of serves its purpose, it's better against Tron, which Tron is on an up and up with winning the last two major events. So I like that. Glow Spore Shaman is kind of the interesting one. Seder Wayfinder is one of the best cards in your deck and I just basically wanted a fifth, sixth, and seventh Seder Wayfinder. Glow Spore Summon is much worse, but it's better in some senses. In these fair games where you just have to beat down with like bad creatures because they like ley line lock you or they have a bunch of cages, you know, like a very hateful draw, but maybe, maybe their draw is very anemic because it's all hate cards and they're not doing what their deck should. You play a three one, boom, 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 boom. That's a fast clock. So it, it's okay in that. And then our last uh, little cyborg slot or uh, uh, fringe slot is one Stinkweed Imp. Now I think Crab, Hedron Crab is a pretty good option as well for like re-buying your graveyard. But for now, I don't want just one Hedron Crab. Plus we would have to change our mana base, so I don't like it. So it's either Golgari Thog or Stinkweed for me or another Glow Spore Shaman. I think you can get flooded on two, so I decided to go with the Stinkweed Imp. Just that extra card in your graveyard when you just want that extra finishing punch. So let's get on to the sideboard. I have one Fatal Push for any kind of creature deck, especially when you're on the draw. Killing Death Shadow, um, killing even a Lattawar Elf, good against humans. Um, just a well-rounded card that it's hard to be bad. Two Thoughtseize, definitely four more combo-y decks. Control, um, you know, Urza, um, Ad Nauseam, really unfair decks like um, Neoform, uh, stuff like that where you just need to disrupt them. 
Plague Engineer is pretty good in the mirror. Um, it's good against those fair games as well, where you can like name zombie and they can't return grave crawler. Their Karen feeders are bad. Crypt breakers are bad. Um, it just shuts down a lot of their deck as well as good against Urza where they can't infinite combo you. And sometimes they take out all their removal and you can just get them where it's just three mana. You're never comboing this game. Beat me with Urza. Sometimes that's not easy. Sometimes it is, but for Leyline, don't leave home without them. It's a Hogak world. We're just living in it. So make sure you have uh, you have four in your deck. Shenanigans, a great Urza card. Good against um, Thopter, or I mean, uh, excuse me, Hardened Scales. Um, any artifacts, pretty plain and simple. And then five more ways to deal with Leyline. Our sideboard's pretty one-sided because we have one goal in mind. Kill the ley lines and then do the most powerful thing in modern, which is hellgacking. All right, everybody. I want to thank you so much for watching this week's Drop and Bombs. That's all I got for you. I hope you crush it if you're going to uh, GP Vegas for what could be one of the last times where Hogak exists. So I wanted to make sure and show gag. Show gag. <laughs> I wanted to make sure and showcase or show gag Hogak one last time and show you the different iterations you can have on Hogak. So, all right, good luck if you're playing an event. If not, have some last fun with Hogak before it gets banned. All right, we'll see you next week on Dropping Bounds.